Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video I'm going to show you my portrait of the actress Ana de Armas. And for this one I'm going to use the Kohinoor Silky Black Pencils. I've already done a review on these pencils. I think uh, the review was done in a Batman drawing I did a few years ago and uh, these pencils are very similar to let's say a regular black colored pencil but I think they're a mixture of charcoal and some other binder I don't really know how to classify them because I don't know their exact composition but they're just black drawing pencils and they're good for black and white drawings they're good for portraits they come in three grades and uh, for this one I'm mostly going to use two grades one and two number one is the softest and the darkest one it's a little bit more similar to some charcoal pencils maybe number two is which I'm going to use for the most part is a little bit more similar to let's say a regular black colored pencil anyway those are the tools I'm going to be using I do a lot of portraits with these they're pretty good drawing tools so let's uh, get on with the narration of the portrait then. Um, the reference is going to be included in the description if you want to check it out. The reference or the photo is a little bit challenging I think in terms of lighting. Uh, some parts of the face are, because of the lighting appear a little bit flat and also there's some reflected light coming from below which makes it a little bit difficult to interpret the shapes, the topography of the face. So I had to study some other references but in the end I hope that it turned out okay. Anyway I'm doing the hair now as you can see and I started by putting in some darker values first to separate this uh, straight hair into segments and then uh, once I laid down the basic texture by pulling my strokes in one direction I basically used a curved tapered stroke from one side and then the other and after that was done I used a brush for blending I usually use flat brushes for blending because they give me a lot of control and precision and I normally like to use a couple of different kinds. Most of the time I use soft synthetic brushes, but sometimes I also use harder bristle brushes. Here I'm just gently blending with a soft synthetic brush and uh, pushing the material left and right and pushing it into those lighter spaces which I didn't cover with my pencil. Because you see, uh, when you're drawing here, just like when you're drawing let's say grass or some other things you can't really draw every single detail you can't draw every single hair so the way to increase the volume of that hair and make it look more realistic is to use blending tools and the best blending tool to use uh, with when you're drawing here is usually a brush for these highlights on the hair uh, where the hair appears lighter because that part, that round part of the head is um, closest to the light source I suppose. Um, I'm going to use this Tombow Mono Zero eraser to pull some lighter details on the top of her head. So that part of her hair because she has a straight shiny hair that part of the hair which is round which is curving downwards and which is facing up towards the light source is going to be lighter so I made it lighter using the Tombow Mono Zero eraser which is an eraser that can be used just like a pencil it's very convenient if you want to pull marks in a similar fashion as you would as you would if you were just working with a regular pencil except the difference is when you're working with a pencil you're making black marks or darker marks and when you're working with a pencil eraser like Tombow Mono Zero you're pulling lighter marks anyway uh, her head is resting on her hand here and or leaning on her hand 
and now I'm shading the hand the lower part or the palm which is facing away from the light source is going to be darker so I added a considerable amount of value and shadow in there and now I'm shading this portion of the hand a little bit lighter now the very top which is catching the largest amount of light will be uh, the lightest so I barely put in any value there so I'm going to want to establish the contrast between the this shadow side of the hand and uh, the light side which is at the top the darkest part like I said obviously is the palm or that in inner area between the fingers which is uh, which is facing away from the light source I'm doing some blending with a q-tip q-tips are pretty good blending tools uh, with colored pencils on regular paper and um, they work well with graphite as well you can also do hair with them but most of the time I prefer to use a brush just because it allows me to pull those broad strokes which uh, uh, follow the direction of my pencil strokes easily I'm just adding some uh, final touches to this hand and now I moved on to the shoulder and the bicep area and you can see I'm adding some more value to this armpit area again where we have a little bit more shadow you can't just leave a line there you have to explain to the viewer what every line what every crease and every wrinkle means because each of those lines is a shape so you have to explain what's casting a shadow onto what here I'm moving on to the face the facial features and first drawing the eyebrows using a fairly sharp pencil because I need to draw some fine thin hairs there I want to capture the direction of those hairs because even when I blend over them with a brush that texture or those lines will still remain visible so those bangs are um, you can see a little bit of the eyebrows through them so I didn't want to go, go all over the uh, the eyebrows I didn't want to cover them entirely on the side of the face and now I'm starting to draw the eyelashes for this one I'm gonna to have to use the slightly darker one and for the pupil as well the, the slightly darker number one great and I have to be careful here because um, these are some very fine details and there's always a little bit of tension and stress uh, when you're drawing these uh, finer details where you don't really have much room for mistake where you have to draw with a bit more precision now I'll get back to that later because um, the shape of the eyes is uh, very important if you want to capture the likeness usually you capture the likeness of the person by shading the entire eye socket area in relation to the nose especially yeah, by shading that properly but sometimes the very shape of the eyes and the eyelids can also be important and that was the case here but like I said I'll get to that later once I do the other eye so now I'm doing a little bit of shading around the nose and around the side of the face just trying to frame the face so that I have a better idea about the um, overall shape and I also like to put in those darkest areas first where I can because that helps me navigate through the rest of the portraits, uh, portrait in terms of the amount of value so for example if I put down those darkest bits uh, on the face like the eyebrows, eyelashes and eyes and the pupil uh, then it can be easier for me to gauge how much I need to shade the area around it of course because of the value interaction some of the areas which seemed dark may become lighter 
during the drawing process but then you you can always go back and revisit them and revise them by adding some more value to them moving on to the mouth and again just trying to make sure that the uh, sheep is exactly as I see it in the reference. The mouth is half open, or not not even half, it's just slightly open so we can see the teeth just a little bit. And here I'm moving on to the other eye and the eyebrows. Let me say a few more words about the pencils I'm using because uh, like I said I've already done a review on these. I've been using them for a couple of years now, I think. <laughs> Um, and you know uh, if you want to check out that review I'll put it in the in the end screen I always link some videos in the end screen which are related to the either the topic or the materials which I'm using in the current video so um, you should always check out my other videos there's always some interesting th stuff to to see anyway um, as I've already mentioned, these pencils to me are very similar to a black colored pencil, so they are definitely darker than graphite pencils, they are less reflective than graphite pencils. They don't blend as well as graphite pencils, they don't blend nearly as well as graphite pencils do, and they also don't blend as well as charcoal pencils do, so I would say that they are uh, very similar to colored pencils except for the fact that uh, I think they are just a little bit darker especially the number one grade and that is why in many of my colored pencil drawings I used this Kohinoor silky black pencil in combination to the Faber-Castell black colored pencil because it, allow it allowed me to create some even darker, deeper tones, especially when I was layering uh, that black color on top of some other lighter layers. Here as you can see I've skipped a little bit and I made a bit more progress. Uh, so I've done the rest of the hair on the left side and I'm just uh, going back in and adding a bit more shadow between the segments to make the hair look a bit more three-dimensional, three to clean it up a little bit make it look a little bit better and here I'm adding a little more shadow on the neck but I need to be careful because she's wearing a necklace and I want to try to keep that area just a little bit lighter uh, and, and as you can see now I'm moving on uh, by shading a little bit more of the face and trying to define the topography of the face a little bit better she has some freckles on her face so I'll get to adding those a little bit later and uh, I'm shading the forehead area now because it appears a little bit darker usually the forehead area is uh, lighter than the lower part of the face but here the lighting is a little bit strange because you can see the her hand and the, the top of the head is catching a lot of light from above so the light is coming from above but most of her face is in the shadow and some parts of the, uh, her face are catching some light um, some reflected right, light from below so it's a little bit different it's a little bit confusing and that's what's going to make this portrait a bit more challenging Another thing that I found uh, with the shape of the face and the eyebrows was that her eyelashes, um, her eyelashes are kind of drooping downwards a little bit at the end. So that that's just the way they grow, or maybe it's the shape of her eyelids. But I found that once I um, modified the shape of the eyelashes and kind of made them droop a little bit more to the side I started to get a bit more likeness with her eyes it's a tiny detail it's just a tiny difference in angle but for me it made quite a bit of a difference 
when you're when you have a photo taken from the front um, the problem can be that sometimes the face can appear too flat if you don't shade the sides of the nose or the sides of the face sufficiently. She also has these freckles here and there <coughs> and maybe a few beauty marks. I'm trying to include those, at least the ones that I can see, the, the, uh, the larger ones. Some details on this necklace here as well. And then of course I have to do a little bit more work on the hair on the right side. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put in these dark uh, <clears throat> shadow areas between the segments of hair. And then uh, do the rest. I usually try to pull a curved tapering stroke, but the thing that's making my job a little bit difficult is when I'm recording top down. Um, uh, it can sometimes be uncomfortable <clears throat> when you're kind of limited in terms of the angles. So it's easier to rotate every now and then. I find it a lot more comfortable to draw portraits when I'm not recording. You can also lean in a lot more and uh, work on tiny details and textures. So with portraits that I record for YouTube, I sometimes have to do at least a little bit of work off camera. Another thing that I often have to do is I have to double check the um, the amount of value in different parts of the face and the way to do that is to step away from the portrait and look at it from a distance of at least a few meters and that way you can see if the larger darker areas are in place or if they if they're dark enough stuff like that so i did the rest of the hair on the on the right side and now i'm shading the shoulder and the rest of her top I'm going to use a Q-tip again to blend this smoothly because I don't really want much texture here. And there are some interesting shadows here on her shoulder. These are a little bit tricky. I don't know if they will make enough sense to the viewer because they kind of look like strange lines but that's because the hair is kind of all over the place on the right side, so that's why we have those shadows. Anyway, I'm just doing a little bit of cleaning up here. The drawing is almost done. I'm just going to pull a few final lighter marks with a pencil eraser. And I'm going to put my signature in the lower right corner. So here's the finished drawing. I made a few tiny adjustments off camera. I took away a little bit of value off the lips, made them a little bit lighter and uh, made some adjustments around the nose as well. Uh, but it's done now. I hope you enjoyed the drawing process. Don't forget to give me a like and check out my other videos. For longer videos and more content, check out my Patreon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.